Hello and welcome football fans to the Wide Left Sports Duke Football Dynasty on NCAA 14. My name is Sam, and while I've done countless dynasties on NCAA, this is going to be the first I've done for YouTube, so appreciate you guys giving me a shot. Right off the bat, I know this isn't college football revamped. I'm probably as disappointed by that as you are. Um, as you'll see in a moment, I'm going to be playing on Xbox, which is unfortunately way harder to mod than PS3. But if anybody knows where to go get it modded, please drop it down in the comments and maybe we can transition this dynasty over to revamped. With that said, welcome to the dynasty. We're going to be taking over a Duke team for the 2021 season that in real life won three games this year, two games last year, and actually has an all-time losing record as a program, 500 to 539. I'm all about a challenge and a great storyline. So the goal of this dynasty is going to be one, obviously winning a national title, two, getting the program back above 500 all time, meaning that we're going to have to win 39 games more than we lose over the course of this series. And then three, getting permanently out of the shadow of Duke basketball. You guys already met some of the players in the intro. So now let's meet the coach. While this coach K might be hanging up his whistle in a few weeks, there's about to be another one in Durham. Meet Mark Kaminsky. No, he's not related to Frank. And yes, he's rocking the sweater vest. As you can see, his alma mater is Kentucky, and that's Hall Mummy and Mike Leach is Kentucky. So expect to see a heavy dose of the air raid in our playbook, along with some pistol and strong eye concepts. Weird combination, I know, but it should be fun to watch. Looking at the contract, We've got plenty of job security, at least early on. Clearly expectations are pretty low, maybe not in the first couple years, but I expect we should be getting six wins a year pretty easily by year three or four. In terms of these skill trees, I'm going to try to keep these balanced over the course of the series. So for every recruiting upgrade, we're going to do a game management upgrade as well. Otherwise, I know it's just easy to focus on the recruiting tree. I've done it before, so we're going to try to keep this balanced and Hopefully that adds some longevity to the series. All right, you've met the head coach. Now let's get to the coordinators. Leading the offense, we have two-time Super Bowl winner and maybe future Hall of Famer Eli Manning. Maybe it's just the Cutcliffe connection or the fact that he kind of looks like former Duke QB and current New York Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. But it just felt right having Eli coach our QBs and runner air raid offense. And then... At defensive coordinator, we've hired former Duke point guard and Syracuse quarterback, Greg Paulus, who decided to help the team out when he's not getting bullied by Danny Green. He's going to be in charge of our aggressive 4-2 defense, and you're going to see why we're running that in a moment here. Okay, I know you've already seen some of the players in action, but let's talk about the roster and take a look at some spring game and practice highlights. For a team that went 5-18 and over the last two years, there's actually a surprising amount of talent here. We've got a stud 90 overall running back in Mateo Durant and an 86 overall middle linebacker Shaka Hayward. The secondary, wide receiver, and offensive line are all pretty strong. However, quarterback is going to be a major liability. Right now, it's looking like Gunnar Holmberg is going to be our starter. His team won the spring game pretty convincingly and he made some nice plays, but the whole room is far too inconsistent especially with the QB accuracy slider set to five. By the way, big shout out to Jay Kitts for his amazing slider set. If you want to use them in your own dynasty, the link is going to be in the description. So go check that out. But back to quarterback real quick. This is likely going to be a position for us where we either look to bring in a recruit or a transfer for next year. As far as other positions of weakness, we're pretty thin at linebacker. Shaka Hayward is a star and Dorian Mousy is solid but beneath those two, we've got absolutely zero depth, which is a big reason we're playing the 4-2-5, trying to keep linebackers off the field, and our secondary, like I said, is pretty strong, so trying to make sure as many of those guys play as possible. And then lastly, minus Ben Fry, who's an 82 overall senior, our defensive line is pretty inexperienced, but I do think there's some potential there, so we're going to try to get as many guys an opportunity to play as possible. All right. I just want to take a quick look at what the media is expecting from us this year. Hint, hint, it's not a whole lot. 
Looks like ESPN has us ranked 87th in their preseason poll, below Florida Atlantic, East Carolina, who we actually are going to play this year, and Western Michigan. And it gets worse. The coaches voted us to finish dead last in the ACC Coastal, and Carolina to finish first. Looks like everyone's doubting us, and if I'm honest, probably rightfully so. And to make matters a whole lot worse, we're playing a pretty tough schedule here in year one. We've got number one Alabama and Atlanta in week one, fellow elite academic institution Northwestern in week two. We're bringing back that legendary Maryland rivalry in week seven for the first time since they left the ACC. And then in weeks 12 and 14, we play back-to-back -back ranked opponents with an off week in between. First, we go to Miami to play the U, and then we have number nine ranked arch rival North Carolina at home in the battle for the victory bell to close out the year. We need to win six to be bowl eligible against this schedule. I think that's gonna be a tough task, but we'll see what this roster has. All right, lastly, I just wanna talk briefly about recruiting and give you guys a sneak peek at some of the custom recruits that will be freshmen in year two. So first off, I wanna set some house rules. I think recruiting is definitely one of the weak spots of NCAA 14. It's way too easy to build a loaded team in year one or two. And so to make this series more fun and a bit more challenging, I'm going to be limiting myself to three-star recruits that either have an interest in Duke or that fall into our pipeline, with a few exceptions. The first exception is going to be that I can recruit four stars from North Carolina, but no five stars no matter where they're from. Secondly, I'm going to allow myself to recruit the North Carolina border states, so South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia are all places where we can recruit. I'll be probably relaxing these rules as the team improves, but as we get started, this is what we're working with. With that said, let's take a quick peek at year one's custom recruits. So as you probably realized, I've created the class of 2022 Rivals Top 10 as part of the first recruiting class, along with a few fictional recruits. Now, we probably aren't going to see any of these guys on our team in year two. They're all going to be five stars, and I'm assuming they don't want to come play for Duke. But I'm planning on building at least the top 10 every year. So as we improve, I think we might start to get some of these guys. Real quick, let's take a look at some of the guys who might be suiting up for Duke next year. Obviously, we've got to make QB a priority, and I know we can't see all the ratings, but I like Kyle Porter and Justin Thompson's blend of size, speed, and throw power. Second most important position to address is offensive line, and I like some of our options here too. I want to see Mike Washington's strength in pass block, but I like his size out at left tackle, and I think Sergio Nash could be a long-term solution at right tackle with that potential combination of speed, size, and run blocking. At guard, Chad Montgomery from Hamlet, North Carolina looks like a stud. Really like his size, acceleration, and impact blocking. At corner, I know he's already got a potential deal breaker, but keep an eye on Ryan Osborne. He's a little on the smaller side, but you can't teach speed. At linebacker, I'm liking John Reese and Tony Porter, especially Porter. I mean, 6'5", 230 with 88 speed as a recruit. If we can get him, I think he might be our defensive centerpiece of the future and a potential first rounder. And then lastly, we have Clayton Wright. He's a four star all around tight end from Ohio. Now, I know I said we couldn't recruit any four stars not from North Carolina, but he found his way onto my board by mistake and now he's my number one tight end recruit. I'm gonna let you guys make the call here. Let me know in the comment section of this video if you think he should stay on the board or not. All right, that's it for the video. 
If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and a subscribe. This is Sam with Wide Left Sports, and I'll see you all back here on Saturday when your Duke Blue Devils take on the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Peace.